Good morning, I'm Peter. Today, I would like to present a memory efficient framework called GMMAP that allows energy constraint devices to compactly represent 3D environments using Gaussian mixture model. This work is co-advised by Professor Satish Karaman and Vivian Z. Many existing and emerging edge devices, such as AR VR headsets, smart robots, and smartphones, require long-term interactions with a map, which is a 3D representation of the environment. For instance, VR AR headsets needs to render a photorealistic map to offer immersive experiences for the users. Robots needs an accurate map to avoid colliding into obstacles when autonomously navigating in a crowded environment during search and rescue or space exploration. As an example, a 2D map of the environment used for robotics navigation is shown on the right, where black cells represent obstacles, white cells represent obstacle-free region, and gray cells represent unexplored region. To ensure safe navigation, the robot should travel along path that lie within the free space to avoid obstacles, as shown as color lines in the figure. Thus, a 3D map should also accurately represent both occupied and free regions in the environment. Unfortunately, accurate 3D maps require a large amount of memory to both store and construct, which leads to significant energy consumption on energy-constrained devices. In this figure, we plotted energy consumption on the y-axis with different types of arithmetic and memory operations on the x-axis. From the figure, energy consumption associated with different types of memory accesses, which are shown in orange, are orders of magnitude higher than different types of floating-point computation, which are shown in green. In addition, accessing data stored in a larger off-chip memory, such as DRAM, requires more than an order of magnitude higher energy than on-chip cache with only kilobytes to megabytes of storage. To conserve energy, algorithms should require a low memory capacity on the order of kilobytes to encourage cache usage and reduce DRAM access. However, current mapping frameworks are not memory efficient due to their low compactness, multi-part input processing, and recasting during map update. In our GM map, we'll present solutions to resolve each of those challenges. First, we discuss why our Gaussian representation is more compact than prior representations. Consider an exploration experiment where the robot captures the 3D environment using multiple depth images. For simplicity, we consider a single depth image where pixels closer to the robot are darker in color. This image requires 1.2 megabytes to store and can be projected into 3D as a list of points called point cloud that consumes 2 megabytes. From the point cloud, most mapping frameworks downsample them into cubic cells called voxels whose outlines are colored in red. Just for the single image, voxel-based representation requires 147 kilobytes to store. For a much larger environment captured with multiple depth images, which is illustrated here, the number of voxels scales cubically with the size and resolution of the environment, which can require tens of megabytes to even gigabytes for storage. Gaussians can be used as a more compact representation than voxels, and can be parameterized by a mean and a covariance matrix. Here we plotted how a Gaussian would look like in 1D, which is a well-known bell curve. The peak or the center of the distribution is a mean, and the width of the distribution is a covariance. In 2D, the distribution looks like a very small hill. Now, if we cut the distribution using red line in 1D or plane in 2D, the ISO surface, where the plane and the line intersect the distribution, looks like an ellipsoid, which encloses a majority of the distribution near the center. For mapping, our Gaussians are in 3D whose ISO surface, shown in blue, encloses the points on the object, which are shown in red. For a more complicated 3D scene, multiple Gaussians are required. In this case, we use 54 Gaussians, whose ISO surfaces are outlined in red. Gaussian is very compact 
and has high representational power because its rotation, orientation, and scale can be changed to cover objects represented by multiple voxels. Thus, our Gaussian-based representation requires only 9 kilobytes for this thing, which achieve similar accuracy and consume 16x lower memory than voxel-based representation. The similar trend holds for a much larger map constructed with multiple depth images. In this case, our GM map consumes 840 kilobytes, which is around 13x lower than voxel-based approach. Next, we discuss how we can efficiently construct the Gaussians using our single-pass algorithm compared with prior multi-pass approaches. Even though Gaussians are very compact, determining their optimal set of parameters is not an easy task. Due to Gaussian's flexibility for representation, one can imagine many viable ways to place the red ellipsoids for the current example on the right. To accurately represent point cloud using Gaussians, each Gaussian illustrated in the red should represent one part of a planar continuous surface. Thus, it is really important for the algorithm to find out which subset of measurements in 3D space that are near to each other on the same surface. However, the point cloud is typically stored as an unorganized list of points, where the spatial relationships among the points are not encoded. For instance, consider a list of n points in the right. Let's say for each point in the list, we want to find its nearest neighbor in the same list. This involves computing the distance between each point to every other point. Doing so for all other points requires multiple traversal across the entire list. This is precisely the reason why prior approaches that directly convert the point cloud to Gaussians require multi-pass processing. Since points are accessed multiple times, they are stored entirely in memory, which requires megabytes of storage overhead. However, we can achieve single-pass processing by directly operating on the depth image, which encodes the spatial relationships of our 3D measurements. Interestingly, we notice that measurements that are neighbors in 3D, which are shown in the red circle on the right, are also likely neighbors pixels in the 2D image as well. Thus, our algorithm is able to directly infer the connectivity of the surfaces from the depth image in a single pass. Specifically, our algorithm processes images row by row in a raster scan order as illustrated by the arrows. This order is chosen specifically based on how the data is transmitted from the actual camera. In our algorithm, called Single Pass Gaussian Fitting, or SPGF, we alternate between two steps to infer surface connectivity in a horizontal and vertical direction. So during scanline segmentation, SPGF infers surface connectivity horizontally to create line segments that lie on different surfaces in the 3D world, which are illustrated as red lines in the right figure. Note that lines on the same surface look very similar across neighboring rows. Then SPGF infers connectivity vertically by merging segments that are similar across rows. The final outputs after processing each row is shown on the right. Note that we illustrate the sensor rays corresponding to each row as blue lines. Because our algorithm processes the depth image one pixel at a time in a raster scan order, only one pixel is required in memory at any time, which leads to significant memory efficiency. By directly exploiting the connectivity information in the depth image itself, SPGF achieves similar accuracy while requiring only 43 kilobytes of overhead for storing input and temporary variables, which is at least 88% lower than prior multi-pass approaches. Finally, we present our Gaussian fusion procedure that avoids significant amount of DRAM accesses during recasting in map update. So far, we only focused on the creation of Gaussians from a single image. During a robotics experiment, the robot typically captures multiple images from different locations that can observe the same 3D object. To conserve memory, 
Gaussians that belong to the same object need to be fused together to create a single coherent map. To fuse measurements, prior mapping frameworks uses raycasting to determine which region of the map needs to be updated. Consider a single 2D example where the robot arrives at a location indicated in red and makes a set of measurements indicated by the blue arrows. Cells located at the end of the arrows or rays are obstacles which should be colored as black. Cells located along the sensor rays are free of obstacles which are colored as white. And all remaining cells are gray or unexplored. Since the race diverges from the robot, memory accesses along the race often lacks spatial and temporal locality for effective cache usage. To see this, consider the memory access pattern shown on the right side, where the numbers represent the order of memory access along each ray. Notice that within each ray, the consecutive numbers often occur on different rows or columns of the map. If the cells in each column or row of the map are stored in consecutive addresses in DRAM, this memory access pattern lacks spatial or temporal locality. To avoid casting each individual ray separately, we we'll first bundle the rays using Gaussians. In particular, we extend our SPGF algorithm to SPGF star in order to create blue Gaussians for compactly representing the free space along the sensor rays, also in a single pass. Across different images, we can directly fuse Gaussians that represent the same object in 3D space without ray casting. Here, we illustrate a bird's eye view of the blue and red Gaussians created from the new image and previous images as 2D ellipses. Since the Gaussians in the green box represent the same region in the environment, they can be directly fused together. Recall that operating on data stored in caches with only kilobytes of memory are orders of magnitude more energy efficient than DRAM. Since the subset of Gaussians that are fused together often requires less than 100 kilobytes to store, the fusion process is very cache friendly and energy efficient due to temporal locality of the data. Since the number of Gaussians are much less than the number of rays, the fusion process is also computationally efficient. On a low-power ARM CPU, our fusion process reduces DRAM access and the cache miss rate by 78% compared with prior works that require ray casting. Here, we illustrate the entire mapping process on a low-power ARM Cortex CPU and Pascal GPU. Across multiple depth images, the final occupied and free Gaussians are shown in red and blue ellipsoid at the bottom. Our single-pass input processing and the Gaussian fusion process not only provide memory efficiency, but also leads to significant computational and energy efficiency. Using a single CPU core, our GM map can be constructed at 18 images per second. To increase throughput, we concurrently compute scanline segmentation across multiple rows of depth image using multiple cores. Thus, our GM map can be constructed at 60 images per second using all four CPU cores. And this throughput can be further increased to 80 images per second using both CPU and GPU. When benchmark on the CPU alone, our GM map enables real-time map construction with 3.6x to 116x higher throughput than prior works. In addition, our energy consumption is 69% to 98% lower than prior works. In addition to throughput and energy, we compared the accuracy and compactness of the GM map against state-of-the-art frameworks. Recall that each Gaussian distribution has no bound and extends beyond their ellipsoidal wireframes. Thus, objects that are not well covered by ellipsoids, which are illustrated in the blue circle, are in fact well preserved when we plot the occupied region after uniformly sampling the map at a fixed voxel resolution. Due to the flexibility of Gaussian representations, our GM map for this indoor room environment requires 176 kilobyte, which is more than an order of magnitude lower than OctoMap at similar accuracy. Visually, you can observe that each Gaussian ellipsoid cover a surface that is represented by multiple smaller voxels in OctoMap. 
Compared with the state-of-art Gaussian-based framework NDTOM, RGM map achieves slightly higher accuracy while reducing the map size by half. In NDTOM, each Gaussian is sized similarly. In contrast, our single-pass depth image processing allows our Gaussians to flexibly adapt to the size of each object, which leads to a lower map size. Across multiple indoor and outdoor environments that we've tested on, our GM map achieves comparable accuracy while reducing the map size by 56% to 98% compared with prior works. In conclusion, our GM map is a novel Gaussian-based mapping framework that achieves state-of-art compactness while maintaining comparable accuracy as prior works. More importantly, GM map can be constructed in a memory-efficient manner due to novel algorithms that enable single-pass input processing and Gaussian direct sensor fusion without recasting. Our GM map not only enables real-time 3D mapping on energy-constrained devices, such as micro-robots, smartphones, and headsets, but also illustrates the significance of memory-efficient algorithms for enabling other exciting applications on those devices. To learn more, please check out our conference and journal paper. We look forward to presenting our specialist hardware architecture for the GM map in the future. Thank you.